What's up, guys? We're here with Don Machi. It's been mm -hmm. a while. We've been busy. Our lives have changed many a time, but yeah. now we're back with what we have always wanted to cover, Volume 16. Some speculation ahead, mm -hmm. some release date, um, and a description on the back that we have to cover today. Yeah, so it's actually kind of crazy because we held off on actually saying the release date in the video for so long because it felt like the last time we did that, it just jinxed everything and we didn't get the book for like a year and a half. So it's close enough though. I don't think it's gonna get pushed back, fingers crossed still, but it is officially a month away, at least in our time. In your time, it might be a little bit closer, um, but we're here to talk about, like Michael said, volume 16. So I'm gonna start off by showing Michael the cover because he's not seen it. I, got to, I unfortunately saw it after we read volume 15, uh, so I've been like shaking in my boots waiting to see more of the description and stuff like that But I've held off on the description. So we'll be go. We'll both be going into that blind, but here it is Michael Look at that. That's kind of crazy. I'm gonna put it up on screen so you guys can see it as well uh, I think just the thought of like oh, I was gonna having text. I shouldn't read that. Yet. Yeah, yeah just the thought of having Freya and Seer as like a main focus in the volume, I think is gonna be cool. At least if they go that approach, I would assume they're gonna have a, a substantial part with them being on the cover. But I think having them both on the cover does lead to some pretty cool speculation. Plus, look at Bell. He looks like he's getting ready for like a first date or like a getting taken I, to the prom. I love how he's like, like every other cover, he's got like a knife and he's killing monsters or he's protecting <laughs> someone. And this one, he's just holding up the cover. Like, is it wrong to pick up this? <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not sure anymore. This is the only cover of the series, I think, that I couldn't justifiably say the title is not what you think of the series, you know? It's like, ah, damn, like, if somebody saw me read this in public, I'm just, I have nothing to say. <laughs> yeah. But uh, with that being said, though, I do think the cover is pretty dope. I can't wait to see that in person and maybe what the art is going to be on the inside. Do you want to just get into the, the description here, Matt? Yeah, so we can post this also on the screen so you can read it alongside with us. So oh, okay. here's the description. All right. So, uh... It says, and I quote, One letter from a city girl can cause untold chaos. Belle has been meeting up with Seer as promised, which of course turns into its own kind of commotion as the workers at the Mistress of Fertility. Still not going to get over that translation because it's different in the book. Uh, <laughs> the, the Sword Princess and even Freya Familia all get involved. While everyone is preoccupied with these hijinks, a new shadow approaches the city. So it looks like we're getting a new villain, at least hinted at. Uh, in that later or later uh, part of it and it looks if it's coming out of the sea it doesn't necessarily mean it's in the dungeon maybe it'll be outside the dungeon whether it be a new god and or maybe the dragon coming approaching the city dude there's no <laughs> way they're gonna get into that now i mean maybe uh, but just, i'm just i'm just throwing stuff out here but All right. so it looks like seer is gonna be focused um mainly in this in this book we do have uh freya familia being involved as well part of the cover um, it'll be interesting to see. It looks like there's not going to be much fighting in this uh, volume since they probably are going to be mm. above ground. We may get some level progression at the end of the book, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm kind of curious because with Freya Familia involved, it's a, it says they all get involved. Uh, there's a lot of high levels in the mix of that that I'm kind of with you. I don't know how much on... Uh, Hestia Familia action we're gonna get in this next volume because there is a lot more heavy hitters that I don't think they're necessarily ready to go toe to toe with. Um, maybe fight alongside, maybe that could be a, a part of it, but um, yeah, I'm uh, I think I will definitely say that your theory on it being a, like in the city, I mean, it says like something's approaching the city. Um, so maybe that's uh, something else that leads into this. But I think you're kind of spot on that it's probably going to mostly, if not all, take place in or Ario and not in the dungeon. I think that's probably just a good fit anyway because we've had, like, what, three books in the dungeon? Which I love the dungeon. I love that last arc we got out of. But I think it's a time that we take a pause from that and get back into the city, see some new, uh, like, maybe villains come up. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in the speculation video for this volume. Uh, that it would be cool to get some, like, you know, more human enemies that aren't evils because, uh, you know, the evils, I think, kind of took, like, 
I don't know, like, not necessarily, like, the backseat villain that always popped up, but they were kind of, like, the overarching, like, uh, I guess, villainous force that we've seen a bunch of characters interacting with. And I think, uh, you know, now that we do have, like, a, a bookend uh, to their story, I think it's kind of ridiculous to see them come back. So it would be nice to get some more stuff in here. Do you, Now, do you think, though, that uh, we're going to see some maybe true colors revealed about Seer. Yeah, so I, I think um, the, the first sentence struck me to one letter from a city girl can cause untold chaos. Mm. So I, I think something we know about Bell is he's willing to help his friends. Um, that's something that we've seen in, in recent volumes, especially mm-hmm. um, with the um, many different times Bell has you know sacrificed himself or even his life or his you know honor in the town to, to save those around him. So mm. I think, but I think the conflict in the past we've seen conflicts being solved through violence whether it be rescuing people or Mm. something like that i feel like since we've learned more about sierra and her true colors or true origins what who she is or wants to be Mm. um i think she may manipulate bell a little bit here with a problem that he can't solve with violence and he has to either i hope it's not as cliche as him like pretending to be with her hopefully it's something (laughs) like deeper than that but he may have to um, she may be manipulating him behind the scenes to try to get him to do some things, and that's probably where the conflict comes in, mm. um, if, if that's the case. Well, we do know that's not out of Sears' wheelhouse, given that she did do a similar approach with uh, Liu in the uh, casino arc, posing as uh, her <laughs> wife. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I guess uh, that's the possibility there. I am curious to know what it's referring to as... Um, the promise that Bell and Seer had together, uh, because I I could be wrong. I I feel like this is referencing uh, like maybe the right before the Xeno arc or like the the prelude to like the major conflict in that when we got uh, him helping her at the uh, like what is it the orphanage or mm-hmm. whatever that she's associated with. So I don't know if it's referring to that or something else. Uh, I don't. Know. Do you remember anything about that? Yeah, I think um, I I can't think of anything else that that Bell would be meeting with Sir besides going to the orphanage and taking care of the people there. Mm-hmm. Um, another thing that sticks out is <laughs> this will be the central issue with the with the book if uh, we, we have some divides on is what you know it seems like the sword princess is kind of out of place there <clears throat> mm. um, as far as I mean as far as the main series go she kind of people say she's still a love interest but I don't really see the author emphasizing it so it is kind of interesting like how what role does she play because uh, in the main series, she doesn't have much emotional depth as far as conversating with Belle about things that aren't violence related. Yeah. So I feel like what, you know, she she's kind of a person in this series that I think everyone can agree likes to solve problems with her sword and her OP magical powers. Um, so it'll be interesting how she plays a role and maybe... Maybe that is a clue that there is going to be some action in this episode that we weren't necessarily expecting. You know, I know we seem like a broker record sometimes the way we refer to eyes, but, you know, I think um, there is something to look at because the author, I know uh, he he has structured the the timeline to be very uh, close-knit, like a lot of the stuff happens back-to-back. So I know in, like, our time, it's kind of hard to look at this, like, the, the different events of the story and be like, you know she's been out of it for a while, which is true because we've been focused on so many other stuff. Like, you know, for instance, their expedition, the dungeon and, you know, a a multitude of other things like the Xeno arc and such. Um, But, you know, so technically eyes hasn't been in the story like for a very long time or a number of books, but in like their timeline, has it been like, like a week Maybe a month or a couple. Well, most. yeah, right. Because it, it was like what two months from when they came back from the expedition. Yeah, and to, six months total yeah. up to this point, I think. But I think the I think there's still a justifiable stance of like you know it does feel clunky when you read it of like I just popping up sometimes out of nowhere, and I know that's probably partially due to them trying to you know kind of uh, dance around the uh, plot that they have going around in the the side series too, um, but. Yeah, I'm really curious, since Eyes is going to be in the story, they're going to need to focus on their relationship. Not necessarily, like, romantic relationship, but they're going to need to, like, bring 
up some of the stuff that happened in the Xeno arc to really solidify what their standing is with each other. Because a, a lot of that has still been kind of glazed over, and I think so far, I've kind of rolled my eyes at it, but I've accepted that it's sort of justifiable because of how much of is going on in this story. But I think if we're definitely going to have a bigger emphasis with her in the volume, that's something that needs to be addressed. I don't know how interesting that's going to be to read, but, you know, I trust the author to do something that's not going to blow, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean... We don't we don't mean to sound negative because we're not we're still hyped for the book and it's we're just throwing out ideas here mm -hmm. and obviously we trust the author since we've read so many novel so yeah. many books that we've right. we've liked all of them pretty much um, even the ones that we liked less they were still an enjoyable read and worth uh, worth our time uh, something else that's that I think is interesting and it it's it might just be because we've just read a lot of the side story stuff mm. but I feel like we've I don't know if there's much more to develop with the bene benevolent mistress uh, workers. Mm. Like, you, obviously, you have the one yeah. that was the star of the last arc, and she <laughs> can always be in the story because she's great. Yeah. But the other two work. Like, do have they had much? First of all, have they had much character development in the main series? And then second of all, even with the side story stuff that we added on explaining, I don't really need to see more of them. They yeah. just seem like people. I think the. When we got like the afterword or whatever for volume 15, I thought the the biggest surprise to me was just uh, him noting that the benevolent mistress uh, or like the, you know, the waitresses were going to have such a prominent role again because I don't know, it just felt like we got enough of it, it was time like, you know, we could step away from them. But I will be curious. I think uh maybe the the most interesting part coming up about that is maybe how they're going to connect with the Freya Familia. Because it's always been kind of like specu or not speculated, because we we know it's confirmed, but like there's always been these like hints, you know, that they're tied together and they are like, you know, got some sort of loyalty to Freya. So I think probably that surfacing and getting revealed to maybe Belle or, you know, at least to the reader on like maybe some plot things that could happen. I think that might be the most interesting thing with those characters. So we've talked a lot about speculation. Let's talk about two things that we want to see in the novel. First of all, one thing that I know I want to see, I want to see one scene, Belle, Freya, them talking, them having interaction. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I can't remember the last time they've talked alone besides the time when she killed the goddess and then winked at him and whispered, I love you, which it was still a great moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but we need to see some of that. Like, I enjoy Freya when her familia's on, well, on screen, but when, it, when we're reading about them doing stuff, but it, it's not as thrilling or as interesting to me when it's just like her and Belle, which we've seen a couple scenes of that, but I think it's about time that they could at least have a conversation or something. Um, or at least, you know, wave at each other. Or something. Yeah, because there's not many, like you said, instances where they're even in the same area together. I think the last one in canon is, like, uh, when they were at his uh, latest naming ceremony, right? And, like, Freya's, like, oh, why don't we call him, like, my little... Bu or, you know, like, Freya's, like, lap dog or something like that. I don't know what it was, <laughs> but, you know, that. yeah. Uh, and then, like, Hestia getting all steamed about it. So it would be nice to get, like, an interaction with them. You know, it was kind of funny. Uh, I don't know if this would make it in the book. I think it would be a nice, lighthearted moment, but still getting, like, what you said, a interaction between them that could be more serious and lead into some cool stuff going forward. But um, it made me think, like, what if, uh, you know... Siri's so like, hey, Belle, why don't you, like, come uh, and go to dinner with me, you know? And he's like, uh, like, sure, whatever, you know? Like, maybe he feels like, you know, he's indebted to her or whatever. Uh, and so they go, and uh, it's just, like, Freya sitting at the table, and he's like, wait, uh, Freya? And she was like, yeah, don't you know, like, that's me, <laughs> you know, kind of a deal. <laughs> so, um, a fun like, or just have, like, a, a almost like a double date, but it's not a, it's not like a double date in the sense that, like, there's, Two couples, it's literally just Belle and then, like, Freya and Seer just, like, swapping, inter like, interchangeably throughout the meal. I think that would be hilarious. I don't know if they're going to go that. Uh, that's wild stuff, but I don't know. I think uh, something crazy uh, involving, like, Freya's ex um, obsession with her odor, I think something like that's going to pop up. I think, uh, I think even... Some people that have already read the book that are viewers of the channel kind of hinted that, like, uh, when we reviewed the Freyus uh, series, that uh, some of those 
things that were touched on in that side story was going to circle back to volume 16. So I don't know if, how true that is. I'm going off of their word alone, uh, but I am excited for some of that stuff to pop up. The one other thing that we didn't mention, but I feel like it's a must because it's the only other like solid piece of information that we know of is um, what do you think of uh, the author hinting at, I guess seeing, I think he quoted it as like, the heritage of the Wallensteins, you know, because he kind of alluded that that was going to be a, like the main reason why eyes is going to be inserted in this volume. And I'm just curious, do you, do you think that has any connection with this new shadow that's approaching the city? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> people who read the, I mean, I don't know, maybe there's information about her parents in the side story that I don't care to read, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, even in like the, the beginning of that, where we watched the first season, there is some mystery about like where her family's from and like mm -hmm. who killed her family and like why she is, I was going to say a bad character, why she's, <laughs> why she's so uh, not emotional when it comes to killing monsters and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that, that could be interesting. Um, and yeah, there could be some connection with the new uh, Shadow. It, it To be honest, it has been a while since we've... Um, had a villain that's not connected to the evils that's human i mean obviously uh we've had some monster villains mm -hmm. um and the dungeon kind of itself as a villain so it'd be cool if we could uh see something that is threatening to bell and at the same time doesn't get solved by the freya or uh loki familia so i don't know we'll, we'll have to see in the future but i'm i'm cool with uh character development in this and not as much action because we have uh just come up on to an, um, an arc with a lot of action and progression as far as skills. So I'm cool with, uh, with slowing it down a little bit, and uh, I do want to see some level ups in the near future, <laughs> but that's because I'm greedy for level ups. But. Yeah, I think we'll definitely, I think we'll definitely get a, a couple, because like, you know, or at least see like the, the payoff to it, right? Because like, we had Lily level up recently, but we didn't get like, I don't think like, the actual enjoyment of like seeing her leveled up. I mean, they, they did like a little bit, but like, I think we'll really get the enjoyment when they're in their next conflict or like something like this could possibly lead to a clash. So I think we'll get some hype moments for that. Uh, I want to see more on like Welf's uh, sword and how that makes a, a role or like changes up their dynamic because like in their party sense, because it seems like even though like the author's gonna hold off on wealth for at least a little bit, which still fingers crossed he can level up in the next book. But you know, uh, I think if they emphasize how much much of a power boost he gets with the sword in like their next uh, fight, I think that'll be pretty hype too. Yeah. Um, he just has a million swords. <laughs> yeah. Back there. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. There's a there's a lot of stuff that could happen. I'm just kind of uh, waiting to see since we're so close now. I'm gonna try to keep my expectations low because uh, I think that's always the the best approach to go into something. But um, you know, if we do see the dragon, like you <laughs> like you mentioned, uh, I'm uh, like I guess the the end is sooner than we think. Uh, maybe, maybe she maybe the dragon's know? just chilling, you know, and it's just like the the. Uh, what is it like the epilogue is just like the dragon just chilling and like <laughs> licking his claws um uh. so that's pretty much it for for the description so let's just get some details out of the way so it's going to be released july 20th as far as we know in the united states um, so we, we actually have different ways of buying it. I buy it digitally. Josh usually buys it physical copy. I think with the art on this one, this is a nice one to own. So if you can, if in your region you're able to buy it in print, I think that would be nice. Uh, but yeah, there is a digital copy as well. Um, so yeah, and go ahead and get it now pre-ordered because I saw, uh, like at least on Amazon, and I think maybe even Kindles is a little cheaper, but I know if you do want like the physical release, Amazon has it on pre-order right now for like $13, which is a pretty good discount. Cause I think typically like when they release, it's like anywhere from like 
15 to 18 dollars something around that so you know if you can get like a few dollars discount and have it on release day i mean why not do it yeah so with that um that's pretty much it for this video if you have any speculations for volume 16 for those of you who haven't read it i don't want any real i don't <laughs> yeah. want any spoilers <laughs> If you have any concerns or, you know, just any questions involving Don Machi, you're more than free to comment below, and we'll see you all next time. Alrighty, guys. Well, until then, peace, addicts. Later.